Welcome back guys. So this video is going to be covering kinetic versus thermodynamic products and uh, practice video. So we're going to cover three example problems. So if at any point in this video when we get to the problem you want to pause the video and try it on your own, please feel free to do so. Otherwise we're just going to get right into it. Um, if you're not sure on how to do this topic, I suggest go back to your lecture notes um, or rewatch those uh, the previous video I made on kinetic versus thermodynamic. Alright, so let's get started. So it says Question one, choose the major product of the following, uh, choose the major thermodynamic product of the following reaction. So we have this benzene and off of it we have this diene compound and we react with HCl. All right, so let's get started. Remember that the first step always when we're doing this is you're gonna, as step one, we wanna find the two points on the diene, the two carbons where we can get a carbocation that can resonate, all right? So that's always what we do. So step one, find resonance stabilized carbocations. So here's our benzene. All right. So we know that the double bonds can grab the hydrogen from HCl, so I can either use this double bond or I can use this double bond. So let's try what happens with both. So if I use the one in red, right, where are we going to put the carbocation? We can put the carbocation here, so this double bond stays, or we can put the carbocation there. If we put the carbocation in this carbon, we cannot resonance stabilize it using this double bond, it's too far. So we're going to not put it here. And instead, we're going to put it on this carbon right there. Now, what about the blue? So here's our benzene again. So if the blue double bond grabs it, right, this double bond, we can put the carbocation, and let's keep this double bond here, here, or here. So which of these are we going to pick? Well, again, we want to pick the ones that are resonant stabilized. This is too far away from the other double bond, so we're going to go ahead with, and pick this one. All right. Now, once you find the two structures where the carbocations are able to be resonance stabilized, this is when we look at resonance structures. All right. What you need to do is is step two. So, using resonance, find the most stable carbocation. Sometimes you may get lucky and on the first shot already you have the most stable carbocation. So what we're going to do is let's actually, we're going to draw the resonance structures for both of these guys. Let's do it a little bit smaller over here. Here's your benzene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this double bond right here and I'm going to just resonate it over. So what that's going to do, it's going to give us this product. Double bond is now there, carbocation shifts here. For the blue, move this double bond there. Double bond now there, and carbocation here. So you can see in these resonance structures, the carbocations are all at the ends, right? So we can, they're primary allylic. This guy right here is a secondary allylic. So actually, let's label all these. So primary allylic primary allylic. So in terms of the resonance structures that we just drew, not much to help us. On the original structures we drew, this is going to be a secondary allylic. Right? It's a secondary carbon and he's allylic. This guy is a tertiary allylic. So he is the most stable carbocation. So once we identify which is the most stable carbocation, we focus exclusively on that sort of pathway. So I'm going to completely ignore the red. And so this was a case where like, the first carbocation you could form uh, without looking at resonance was actually the most stable one. All right. So now that we have our more stable pathway, these are going to be helping. This, these are the two structures that will lead to the kinetic and thermodynamic answer. All right. So it asks us to choose the major thermodynamic product. Now remember, the thermodynamic product is the most stable double bond, right? Not in terms of carbocation stability, double bond stability. 
the kinetic product is the first carbocation that we form. So if they ask this for the kinetic product, since this was the first carbocation we form, this is going to be our, um, this is going to help us figure out our kinetic product. So even though it's not asking for it, let's still figure it out. You know, CO minus, tax that carbon in, and let me just remove this resonance arrow, carbon arrow. So our kinetic product would look like this. Double bond there, we are there. All right. Oh, sorry, chlorine. For our thermodynamic product, right, we want the most stable double bond. So we would go with this guy. You can see he's the most stable because, first of all, he's the more substituted one, right? Bound to three substituents, whereas over here, only bound to one. Another thing that stabilizes him is he's in conjugation with this benzene ring, right? We can resonate him, and uh, he's part of that conjugated uh, system, and that also contributes to its uh, to stability. So I'm going to redraw it over here. All right, so Cl- minus comes in, it's going to attack that carbon. And what we're going to get is we're going to get the chlorine right there. So in terms of the answers, it's going to be D. They drew it a little bit differently, but it's the same thing. All right. So that's how we did this problem. Let's go on to the next one. Select the thermodynamic product of the following HBr addition. So here's our dyne that we're focusing on. So let's go. First step, we need to find the two structures where the carbocations are resonance stabilized using each double bond. So I'm going to go again red. Let me color that part in. So red, blue. So in red, grab the H, that bond breaks. What we're going to have is we're going to have this. This double bond we didn't touch. Now where are we putting the carbocation there or there? We're going to put it right over there because this is going to be able to be resonance stabilized with that double bond. If we put it here, better. Look, this is too far away to get stabilized through the, with the double bond, so we can't put it there. So that's going to be our first structure. Let's look at what happens with the blue. Grabs the H, breaks that BR, it breaks that HBR bond. Didn't do anything to that double bond. And where are we going to put the carbocation? Are we going to put it there or there? Well, again, we want it to be resonance stabilized with the double bond. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it right there. So here's our carbocation. Now, resonance structures. Shift this double bond over here. And what we get is we're going to have this structure. Double bond's now there, and carbocation moves over there resonate with this guy now. So what's going to happen is now we have our double bond there. All right, carbocation over there. So in this case, which, which pathway are we following? Well, in this case, we have a secondary allylic in the resonance structure primary allylic. On the blue side, secondary allylic. And over here, it's again secondary allylic. Right? So this one, it kind of dropped in terms of the stability, right? Whereas this one, it kind of remained the same. It looks like it. But remember, when we have, when we're at the position over there next to a benzene, so at this carbon, right? If we have a carbocation there, that's called a benzylic carbocation. Benzylic carbocations are, are um, sometimes more stable than um, allylic. So in this case, we have a secondary allylic, secondary benzylic. All right. So secondary benzylics are actually about the same as a secondary allylic. It's not much of a difference. All right. But even still, we can just determine this by this dropping in terms of the uh, stability. All right. So the blue, again, is going to be our... Um, better pathway, so we're going to erase the red and focus on the blue. 
So we have our two structures, our two resonance structures, and now we got to do is, they said that we want the thermodynamic product. All right. So, what's going to be the more stable double bond? If you're looking, you may think, well, these are equally substituted. This is bound to one carbon there and one carbon there, so di substituted. And same thing for this guy, di substituted. The key thing here is the conjugation that that double bond right here has with this benzene ring. It's connected to that pi system, so it can resonate with the benzene and therefore making it more stable that way. So the double bond is stabilized through resonance in this case. And so that, what I circled in blue, is going to be the structure that we're going to use to determine our um, thermodynamic product. All right. So what's going to happen is we have our Br minus. He's going to attack this carbon. And so that gives the Br there. All right. So we put the Br right there. And actually, let me just move this over a bit. So in this case, you see that the first carbocation we formed, right? This is the first carbocation we formed right there. He is the, also the thermodynamic product. So in this case, our thermodynamic and our kinetic product are the same, all right? Because the double bond was stabilized, is in the most stable position right away. And we attacked the first carbocation we formed, which is what happens with the kinetic product. Therefore, in this case, the thermodynamic and the kinetic product are the same. So this is something you must watch out for. They can ask you in a uh, question where they'll give you, let's say, three different structures, one, two, and three, and they'll say select the structures that have the same kinetic and thermodynamic product. So you need to watch out for this sort of thing because that can definitely come up. All right. Now let's look at this last one. So the following reaction only gives one major product regardless of temperature. All right. So what they're hinting at is that the kinetic product equals the thermodynamic product. Same thing. Oh, okay. Thermodynamic product. All right. So draw the structure of the one product that is both the kinetic and thermodynamic. So they even just said it right there. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to have to find the resonance stabilized structures. All right. Or the carbocations using those two double bonds where we can resonance stabilize it. All right. And so in this case, remember like I said, it's usually going to be just those carbons right there, the carbons that are closest to each other in the dyne. So I'm going to skip ahead. Oh, let me just stick to the red and blue coloring. So this is going to be red. And that's going to be blue. So red, we get this. Carbocation forms there. The ovon is there. For blue... Carbocation in there, the old bond stays there. All right, and so what are we going to do now? All right, how do we figure this one out? Um, so this is again, it's actually pretty similar to the last problem. Um, I should have maybe picked a different one, but I can make up an extra one anyway in this video. And so now what we got to do is again use the resonance structures. So I'm going to move this double bond over, and we get this yeah, this resonance structure. Double bond there, carbocation there. For the blue, move this double bond over. Double bond here now, carbocation here. And so this is again a similar thing that we have um, from the previous from the previous um, problem. So let's go ahead and label all the resonance structures. So secondary allylic. This guy again, secondary allylic, didn't really change. This guy, secondary allylic. And over here, this is going to be secondary allylic, but he's also um, going to be secondary benzylic. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is the more stable one. Because even though allylic, secondary allylic, and secondary benzylic are about the same, well, this isn't. This 
we can at least see that this is definitely the same. So it's not going to really help us that much. So we're going to go again, blue. All right, so let's erase all this stuff. So blue. So this is the first carbocation we formed. Oh, sorry about that. This is the first carbocation we formed. This is the second carbocation we formed. And so they said that the kinetic and thermodynamic product are the same. So what would be the thermodynamic product? Well, in this case, our double bond is in conjugation with the benzene, whereas it's not over here. And since this was the, so that means this is going to be our kinetic product, sorry, thermodynamic product. The double bond is the most stable. And since it's also the same, the first carbocation we formed, it's going to be the um, kinetic product as well, right? And so in this case, like they said in the problem, the kinetic and thermodynamic product are the same. The chlorine attacks that carbon with the carbocation. giving us this structure right here. So that would be the answer to this question. And so like I said, because this was a little bit similar to the second problem, I'm gonna make up another problem right off the bat. So we're gonna have the structure reacting with HBr, right? So what's gonna be the answer to this question? How do we do this? So we, again, you approach it always the same. Right? There's never a difference in terms of really how we approach these problems. So what I'll do is, again, let's label all the double bonds here. So let's use this as red now. And let's use this as blue. So in terms of the red, let's attack here, kicks this out. We're going to get this. Double bond stays here. And so we're going to put the carbocation here or here. Now remember... We want to put it where it's resin stabilized, so not here. If we did blue, we're going to get this. So in this case, this double bond stays. And we have the choice of putting the carbocation there or there. Again, put it where it's resin stabilized, so erase that one. So these are our two pathways, the red and the blue. So let's bring this down over here so we can compare them. Resin structures now. So what are we going to do? So let's see, move this guy over here. And we get this structure. Double bond now over there. And carbocation now at this tertiary carbon. All right. For the red, we're going to move the double bond there. And so now we're going to have the double bond over there and the carbocation there. So let's label all the... Um, types of carbocations we have. Secondary allylic, tertiary allylic. This guy is going to be secondary allylic, secondary allylic. All right, so which one are we going to use? So in this case, since we increase the stability of the carbocation through resonance, we're going to go with the blue pathway. So let's erase this red so now let's figure out our thermodynamic and kinetic product. All right. So this was the first carbocation. Oh, so this is going to be our first carbocation, right? This was our second carbocation we formed. Which one has the more stable double bond? Let's look at the substitution. This double bond is bound to one, two, three things. On the tertiary allylic, is bound to one, two things. Tri substituted, di substituted. So in this case, our first carbocation has the double bond in a more stable position than the second carbocation. So this is going to be our thermodynamic product. Right, so we're going to take the Br minus and attack that carbon. So that's our thermodynamic product. Also, since that is the first carbocation that we formed, it is also our kinetic product. So this is another example where the kinetic and thermodynamic product are the same. And this is a very important concept to get. If once you form that first carbocation and you figure out the pathway um, that you're going to focus on, if the first carbocation you form right, has the double bond already in the most stable position, your kinetic and your thermodynamic product will be the same. All right, so this is an example where they're both the same. So kinetic equals thermo. All right, 
I hope this video helped you guys uh, understand kinetic and thermodynamic products a little bit better. It's a topic where the more pr practice you do, the better it is, you know, the better it will be for you. But again, this is a topic that's good to understand the theory because it's very easy for them to come up with a theory question and ask you on the exam. All right. Like I said, I hope this helped and I will see you in the next video.